We've made it to the point in this semester where we finally get to talk about plate tectonics. In a lot of classes, this is one of the first things that's discussed. Whereas I saved it towards the end. I wanted to hit you with climate change first. Um, in your textbook, this is chapter two. So you can see it tends to be something that's taught early because this is one of the master theories that underpins all of geoscience and our understanding about how this planet works and other rocky planets as well. So when we look at our planet, from a map view, we see that there is a pattern to our surface features and our topography. And I'm just gonna highlight some of those here with you right now. And, and what I would like to say to you is that these patterns are all explained, essentially all, by plate tectonics. We have mountain ranges formed by tectonic collisions. A mountain range submerged beneath the ocean floor, from the mid-ocean ridge system. This mountain range, can you see how it continues everywhere? and it's even sliced by faults, plate tectonics, the Himalaya mountains slamming into Asia, Africa rifting along the eastern side, the Andes mountains and all the volcanoes. There is a pattern to this that's understandable through the understanding of plate tectonics and that's what we'll do for this lecture and the next as well. The surface of our planet, another way to think of this is that it is a mosaic of lithospheric plates. And that's how we're going to start with plate tectonics. What is the theory? It's the concept that the lithosphere of the Earth, right? You remember that from one of the previous lectures on Earth structure, is that there is a mosaic of lithospheric plates. They are brittle and they move. They float upon the viscous asthenosphere. Mosaic lithospheric plates floating or moving, we could say, driven by the viscous asthenosphere. We'll say moving on viscous asthenosphere. Some of these plates are large and they'd be considered major plates. Others are small, like this little guy here, the Scotia plate. And even others are so small, they have a name, but they're not things you've heard of before, like the huge Pacific plate or the huge African plate. All right, as, as we start, at, for the notes at least, I would like to talk about, or frame our notes under a concept of plate interactions. Because if we have this mosaic of plates that are moving around the surface on this viscous asthenosphere, the boundaries between those plates are going to interact in some way. Some move into others, some move away from others. So we're going to go through divergent, convergent, and transform plate interactions. In fact, I'm going to say here, we're going to say boundaries. And the way that we can have these different plate interactions and these boundaries, oh, this is also called active margins. And as I introduce that word active margins, I suppose I should introduce what a passive margin is. Look at the eastern seaboard of the United States. There is no plate tectonics active on that plate. The activity is occurring along that mid-ocean ridge system. And so here is the active margin between one plate and another continental margin of the United States is actually a passive margin. Same here with South America. So so we're gonna put like a star here and we're gonna say like other features and so there is such a thing as a passive margin. Most lectures don't start with this. Maybe this feels disorganized to you. There's also something like Hawaii. See that out there? That's not necessarily associated with lithosphere mosaic of interacting plates. That's called a hot spot. It's for another lecture has to do with the Earth's mantle. And then finally, the last thing I would like to talk to you about before we get into the main part of this lecture is what's going on in the middle of Africa? What's going on in the middle of the United States or South America? This is just called stable interior. We might call it cratonic interior. Cratonic just means continental. So these are aspects of our planet that are not necessarily tectonically active. But that's not the point of today's lecture. Today's lecture are the active margins, the places where volcanoes, earthquakes occur. And our first plate interaction to discuss today is the divergent plate boundary. The divergent means pulling apart. And for each of these, I'd like to have you memorize them within the context of arrows. So for a divergent boundary, one plate is moving away from another. This means that the divergent boundary is associated with tension. And tension within a brittle system leads to rifting, 
right? Because the lithosphere is brittle. So we're gonna say here that this is brittle rifting, kind of as our mechanism. I'm gonna show you a couple different examples for where divergent boundaries occur. The first one we should talk about today is the mid-ocean ridge system. The mid-ocean ridge system, thousands upon thousands of kilometers long, there's a mountain range in the middle of the ocean. We call this the mid-ocean ridge. In this picture, the mid-ocean ridge is this high topographic area in the middle of the ocean. And Africa is spreading away from, pulling apart from, South America. Now, if we were to do a cross section through a mid-ocean ridge, what we would see okay, is ocean water. And then the lithosphere becomes very thin at the mid-ocean ridge. So bear with me as I draw this. We have two lithospheric plates. They are moving away from one another. And where they are broken and pulling apart, it is very thin. So thin, in fact, that magmas form in this area and erupt from that thin place. So we're gonna put the word like lava and magma. The magmas are produced because the asthenosphere that is moving the lithosphere is upwelling in this area, and it's the thing that's actually driving the plates apart. So here we could say like asthenosphere. Astheno upwells. And this upwelling asthenosphere is able to melt, make magma chambers, which makes gabbro, and the lava is quenched to make basalt, which are the different layers in a um, ocean crustal section. Next up, okay, should we label this anymore? We've got oceanic crust. That's oceanic crust, pulling apart, making lavas. As this lava um, cools, it freezes. Oh, that's the other thing. As we get away from the magma, from the lava, from the upwelling, we have thermal contraction or thermal subsidence. The areas that we have very, very hot because the upwelling asthenosphere is at 1280 degrees Celsius. Actually, this is hot and that hot leads to, let's say this, thermal expansion at ridge. And it's this, this thermal expansion at the ridge that actually produces the topographic high. That's the reason why we have mid-ocean ridge, not mid-ocean valley. That ridge is an underwater mountain ridge. Okay, so that's the mid-ocean ridge system. Could we talk about this for days? Yes, I think so, but we can't because this is just intro class. The other place I'd like to talk to you about rifting is at the East African Rift Zone. Because it's not only oceanic crust that rifts, you can also have continental crust that rifts. And in East Africa, that's a prime example where this was Africa. All right, we'll say it like this, Africa. And Africa started to pull apart in East Africa. This is the area of Tanzania, Ethiopia, Kenya. And this has produced a situation where faults have occurred and blocks have down dropped, right? Because as you pull apart, you can create space and allow a block to fall down. And eventually it'll even get to a sub situation where there's like all these different down drop blocks, down drop blocks, down drop blocks, as two plates are pulling apart. And in this down drop block area, eventually, so it could start by filling with water and have a lake, or it could even turn to brand new young ocean. And I'm gonna insert a picture here that shows this. Here is Africa. And the East African Rift Zone is this area. Oh. And notice how there are the large famous African lakes like Malawi and Tanganyika that are actually water filling at this stage right here. That's what those are. The, Dead, uh, the Red Sea, that's an example of this. You could do that. Because the, there's been enough rifting, enough new oceanic crust made in the Red Sea as Saudi Arabia is rifting apart from Africa to create a new oceanic crust. It's examples of, okay, let's actually label this here. This is an example of continental rifting. What else should we put in the notes? How about, how about early stages of ocean formation? You know where the next ocean's gonna form on planet Earth? 
It's gonna form right here in East Africa, and a big gap is gonna open up as the Somali plate detaches away from the African plate. All right, that's our first plate tectonic boundary. Our second tectonic boundary is to talk about what happens when plates collide together. This type of boundary is called convergent. Convergent plate boundary. These are collisional environments where two plates are slamming in to one another. And the process that's gonna control convergence and collision is gonna be buoyancy. And we're gonna put that here before we even make any sketches. We're gonna say buoyancy controls interaction. And what I mean by that is, if two things slam together, something's gotta to go up and something's gotta go down. And we're gonna see that buoyancy is gonna dictate what is able to subduct down into the earth mantle. So there's, there's a number of different types here, depending on what type of plates are slamming into one another. When a continent slams into a continent, both of these are very buoyant situations, and this produces a mountain range. The classic example here is the Himalaya. Both plates, the Indian subcontinent and the Eurasian continent are too buoyant to subduct down into the mantle. And so as India slammed into Eurasia, not, nothing could happen except for the collision and the creation of a mountain belt. We could try to draw what a cross section would look like through here. Well, it would be flatline India and then the Himalaya mountains coming down into flatline like China. And what will happen in the subsurface, right? So here it's the crenel crust is 30 kilometers, over here it's 30 kilometers, and it's 70 kilometers in the mountain range because there's a keel that goes down as well because two plates are slamming into one another and up in the surface there's gonna be a bunch of faulting and down in the subsurface, really deep down where the rocks can't break but they bend, there'd be a bunch of folding. I'm gonna say faults and folds. Now what happens when a continent slams into an oceanic plate? Well here density does win. And so this kind of boundary is called a continent oceanic boundary. And the key here is that oceanic boundary or oceanic lithosphere is high density. It's made up of mafic magmas that are like three grams per centimeter cubed. Where continental crust is more buoyant. It's 2.7 or 2.8. So we're gonna say it's low density. And so the collision between the two actually produces a process which is called subduction. And subduction means one plate goes down into the ocean. Subduction of denser plate, which is the oceanic plate, into the mantle. What this looks like is we're we gonna have a little bit of a mountain range produced because there's collision here and shortening, but here's our continental plate and oceanic plate slams in, has nowhere else to go, and so it is subducted down into the mantle. We can draw our arrows showing that collision, and the things that are produced here are actually very interesting. There are volcanoes produced from melting that occurs, and we'll talk about that. Melting feeds these volcanoes. We have the deepest places in our world's oceans, which are called trenches, like the Marianas Trench is produced. And the other thing that occurs, I'll put it here in blue, is earthquakes. So we'll actually get a series of earthquakes that are forming as sliding occurs and energy is released on this boundary between the oceanic plate, oceanic plate, going beneath the continental plate. The, let's see, should I show, I guess I should show an example of this. Uh, this would be Japan. And this would be the Andes. The Cascades are another good example. All right, the third type of collisional plate tectonic event is when ocean plate, oceanic hits oceanic. And these are both high density, but one is denser than the other. And the answer here is that the older plate is the colder plate which is the denser plate. And so it'll be the one that subducts. To, to draw this, 
here's a plate here is another plate and the one that is older and what I mean by older is like maybe this one is 100 million years old but then this one is 200 million years old and so because it's older it's lost more heat from when it was magma and when it was lava and so it'll actually subduct and it also makes things like trenches the Marianas Trench is an example it makes volcanic arcs that erupt it also makes earthquakes as well these are all features associated with the collision of these two plates let me show you a picture of some oceanic oceanic let's just let's just zoom into this area of earth I'll go to red ink and let's just point out some stuff so this is old Pacific plate and it is moving in this direction and it is slamming into younger oceanic plate down here it's slamming into continental lithosphere up here oceanic here continental uh, let's see, it's moving in this direction so this is the Aleutian arc and what's really cool this feature right here that's the Mary or I guess the Marianas Trench technically is right here but it's this deep area that's the showing the subduction zone this that's a tr that's a set of volcanoes these islands here these are all sets of volcanoes like this here that are associated with this ocean ocean collision all right and finally I feel like this video is already running long the third type of plate boundary is called a transform if you want more go to Wikipedia of course go to chapter 2 in your textbook the transform fault is where the two plates are sliding past one another so here's a plate it's moving north and it could be grinding and sliding past a plate that's moving south so we're going to call this slide in past one another this is like a necessary evil because um well we live on a sphere and it's hard to put segments on a sphere and connect subduction zones to mountain collisions to divergent boundaries without having these accommodators and a lot of in a lot of ways the transform faults are they accommodate other boundaries boundaries on the sphere of planet earth I'm going to show you that in with with the context of the mid-ocean ridge system I showed you this one a second ago but here in this diagram we have a bunch of transform faults so remember the mid-ocean ridge is this and you see how they're segmented they're not all in a perfect line they can't all be in a perfect line because of the curvature of our planet oh, cancel and it's these cross faults that are actually offsetting the mid-ocean ridge and those crosses are transform faults in the oceans so as a like to put this in your notes we're going to say example um, faults in ocean they do also occur on land and we're going to draw one here as we finish uh, this is a class taught in the United States and in the United States there is no fault more scary or more famous than the San Andreas fault which cuts through California so if we drew the state of California it would look something like this uh huh and of course so LA is famous and it's down here in the south San Francisco is also kind of famous as a huge city and the San Andreas fault runs something like this Across California it kind of curves off to the side here and then it actually connects to other transform faults that offset some mid-ocean ridges like so and if we were to put like the arrows in to show the motion on the San Andreas fault it's this east side that is moving down and the west side is moving up as the Pacific plate slides past and grinds past the North America plate plate and then we have these little fault segment or there's the mid-ocean ridge it's pulling apart like this here's a mid-ocean ridge and it's pulling apart like this and so you can see how this chunk of land is all moving up and grinding along the San Andreas which will someday make a huge earthquake that will cause destruction and devastation and we'd want to understand why that has to happen